So you have gone through numerous videos online about getting freelancing clients in machine learning. Money, 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 money. money. But still not able to get a ten dollar freelancing client. I recently signed up a twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars freelancing client for a single machine learning project. Let me make a wild guess. You are here to think that I'll give you some sort of strategy or probably some sort of ninja technique. Well, that's where most of the people fail. People think like taking a big ticket freelancing clients is like a joke it's absolutely not i didn't did this for in a days i didn't did this in months i did this in years and for me to achieve that six figure freelancing client i need to do probably make invest more of my years into this so you think that devoting some 7 days 10 days a month 2 3 4 whatever months you think that you'll be able to get what whatever i'm getting right now absolutely no it's it's like you're expecting to win a marathon with just one week of practice i was an eighth standard when i started with machine learning and my journey was like diving into an ocean without knowing to swim and plus i was probably in my teenage age and to be honest i'm still in my teenage age and at that particular time i was applying to jobs i was trying to get some freelancing gigs and most of the people just said a not interested email and when i was starting out i was applying to several jobs i was applying to several freelancing opportunities which i could ever get but there was naysayers and probably more brutal feedbacks which i got and eventually after every opportunity which i applied to i got a simple answer that they were not interested to work with me several people think that data science is very saturated field that there are no jobs there are no freelancing opportunities but that's absolutely not true it worries me that most of the influencers in data science are also talking on this and you notice and you go to their experience you will see that there is some sort of shortcomings into their experience which is going on a real data science a real data science guy a real data science influencers will never ever tell it's a saturated field they will just tell that you don't have the right skill to get hired and that's the truth which you have to accept it's like people don't have the right set of skills strategies and even at second brain labs which is a pre seed round company over here we are hiring a freaking data science guy a machine learning engineering guy and we are not able to find the right talent and it's not because of the shortages of the people we are reviewing it's because of whatever we are reviewing are not matching our expectations and you write a three lines of code and you think that you somebody will get you a job or a freelancing gig they will not even pay you 1 dollar forget about thousands of dollars getting a job and a freelancing gig is very very different thing today i will talk about how you can get that freelancing gig considering you have some level of experience even if you don't have this experience i want you to listen this i want you to make up in your mind that you have to do this and this if you are planning for freelancing thing anyway freelancing is not just about that you learn something and then you just went to the freelancing or consultancy way it's not about that there's several middle kind of bridges which you have to pass and then reach to the freelancing gig I did my first freelancing project after completing my job at Zenml. So the newbie what do they really do is they just go away, write their solution, okay, I can offer you machine learning, product development, deep learning product development and whatever shit they can write and then they start to cold email businesses. They start to message people on LinkedIn uh business and stuff. And to be honest, I will tell you that you will not even get a single reply. When I created my uh, business email ID at Second Brain Labs, I will show you the set of business emails, set of business kind of uh, consultancy emails of ML came into my like hundreds and thousands of such emails into my mailbox in matter of two days. You think that those thousands and thousands of people are doing the same thing with which which you're doing? And every businesses is getting the same sort of the proposal that hey I can help you into this. Your client wants something or someone who can do their work with experience and probably who can do their work in the way they want it. And probably some people might be able to do it. But what differentiates you with an another? And that's what my concept of differentiator comes in comes into the place. 
And if your services or solutions don't have a differentiator, then it does not make sense for you to go ahead and sell it. The differentiator into this can be multiple. For me, it was like I was very great at social media and probably I was working as MLOps engineer at ZenML, working in a core team. It's one of the fastest growing framework. And probably I had those things and an, another set of like content which acted my, me as a differentiator. And then I got my first good freelancing gig. So the first step which you should consider is getting that required set of skill sets. So before starting any freelancing agency or any sort of thing, these are the questions which you should ask to yourself and then see if it is really something which you can tap in and solve it. What differentiators you have into yourself or probably you have into your people that will that will help the businesses or the clients to successfully trust you and probably differentiate you with the tons of other businesses or probably freelancing agencies which is emailing those clients or businesses out there. If you don't have the right skill sets, first of all, there's no point in going ahead and building some sort of firm. You can be very good at managing people, you can be very good at delegation. You need to first of all have your own experience in order to pitch someone in machine learning and secondly you need to hire the best talent and the best talent can only be hired in data science by actual data scientists. If you're a complete beginner and wants to do something in future in ML services and doing some freelancing around it, I could potentially consider you CSO1 course. Um, currently the enrollments are closed. What you can do, you can fill up a pre-enrollment form. The link is in the description. And if you want to do some analytical kind of services, and if you're already into ML and wants to offer a get understanding of how the analytics things work, there's a platform known as Course Careers. This is an amazing platform. What you could do, you can just go to the analytics course, view their pre-introductory course they give a clear picture on how things will work what are things which is needed and potentially you can also enroll if you want so it's because they have the right set of community if you have any problem you can just go and brainstorm it because it will you can just take those brainstorming and then present it to clients that's the best thing which you can ever do and if you're looking for a job in analytics, there are several other features which Course Careers provides. So certainly you need to continuously upgrade your skills. So if you know ML and you have some experience in ML and you're offering some ML services, what you can do, you can actually go ahead and say, okay, I can now I will offer data analysis services too, but you need to have the clear picture of what data analysis is. And for that, I suggest Course Careers is one platform. I don't have any course on that. Or if you're if you're a complete beginner and probably don't know anything about ML, you can just view my free courses, which is available. I also have a free roadmaps available. You can simply go and check that out. Let's assume that you have the desired skill set. The next question which you should ask yourself is what sort of experience or what sort of differentiator you have than anyone else into the industry. And the first step to this is understanding the landscape, understanding the market. It's because when I started into this agency firms and probably knowing more about freelancing firms, I just went through a bunch of freelancing ML agencies, saw their several platforms, saw their several set of services and how do they provide it. I researched about it. I understand my competitive landscape and that's what you have to do. First of all, and then once you have the all the things ready, what you could do, you can potentially reach out to if you if you know any guy, any client which has taken a services from this particular business, you can go to that client and say, tell me what you think about that if I if I do something better than this guy, uh, will you purchase my service? If they say yes, then that's validated. And not only one people, sometimes one people come and say, okay, yeah, I will purchase it. It's like because of out, out of goodwill, but actually when you go to them, they will say, oh, I am not interested in your service. So interview a lot of people. If you have set of service and then you come up with a service, okay, I will provide an add-ons for free. I will provide services support for free. Other are the differentiators, other are unique selling points. And then you tell, okay, if I tell you these unique selling points and with these existing services, will you purchase my product or not? Will, which, will you purchase my service or not? And hundreds of people will give their own opinion. So conduct a thorough user interview understand your ICP. There was a, so I was talking to a, uh, a guy who runs a Gen AI company and he says that as a service-based company, one can only succeed if it's niche down and knows their ICP, which is ideal customer profile. If you don't know who's your customer, there's no point that you just go and take it away. So that's one point. Once you're clear with your differentiators, understand your customer competitive landscape, then the next step is 
finally going on to building a landing page, a beautiful landing page. One of the strategy which I really, really followed is actually personalizing my landing page with each and every client. So what I used to do, I used to personally draft a proposal for each and every client because my clients were pretty big and I didn't want to take any risk of just giving them a generic format. So I used to form a proper landing page offer which talks about their problem, which talks about how we can address and solve those problems in a way that nobody in the industry could ever do that. And several other things which I could list it out there. Initially, it is very hard. It is very hard to get to 10 clients, but then word of mouth starts. In an agency or service-based model, only word of mouth wins. There's no other things where other thing will take you down. If there is a 10 people and they, if they like your product, they'll say, okay, I can potentially refer you. So they potentially refer you to other businesses and then you start working. So it becomes a kind of a tree where it grows your business. So first of all, you have to kick your ass off in actually doing all those and acquiring those first 10 clients. I never taken my financing form into public. I always had the word of mouth thing from starting. But the thing is, how you can build a one of the biggest differentiator when you reach out to someone so there are hundreds of businesses reaching out but this one content creator who has 150,000 followers on the internet and goes and says hey i have a 150k on the internet i'm we we can do some sort of collaboration i'm looking out for i can potentially help you in building this product or advise you and etc etc so you simply go onto the call with this guy and then that is a differentiator because you are an authoritative and a thorough leader into this field. Even if you have a 10,000, 15,000 follower on LinkedIn, that's good enough. You'll be considered as a very genuine guy. So try to create content on LinkedIn, try to create content on Twitter, try to create content on YouTube. I'll not give you lots of gyans on creating content or probably on YouTube and stuff because I'm also trying it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. I have, I have no right in telling that. There are potential good YouTube videos where you can go and probably see how things work. Posting online or content is not just one time thing. It's about consistency. I post one video a month, but I post one video a month. Now my plan is to upgrade myself to two videos a month, or three videos a month. I'm planning my best. I'm doing my best to do that. So it's all about how you can be consistent enough to grow on content. Now, let's assume you have got the awareness about you about the product which you're selling which is known as the top of the funnel tofu which is kind of awareness about your awareness about your product awareness about the services which you're offering now the second step which comes into the place is interest which is mofo middle of the funnel so is it like you're creating a linkedin post and then you're getting 10 likes into that linkedin post which means that 10 people genuinely interested into your post see there was a book which I was reading, Likes Don't Pay You Bills. It's all about how perfect you build your whole set of target audience. If your target audience is just 10 people, that's good enough. You will be getting out, ten, out of 10, one, and then one will refer to another. So it's all about how you can deepen your relationship with your target audience. You can potentially go and share some BTS. You can potentially go and share your personal stories. You can go and interact on bigger accounts. So it's all about how you can deepen and establish a good relationship with your target audiences and probably with your own people. Now you have good authority figure. Now you have good set of um, conversations going on. You're very open to the people and talking to them. And you know exactly what users want because I've did a thorough user interview. The next step is actually getting in people. And if there is a person reaching out to you via content, that's good to go. You can, there's a call scheduled. But what if, if there's no people coming in your DM and asking about your service? One of the hack which I did is attending the mega conferences, mega events. So what I used to do is I was not specifically targeting those AI events. I was targeting those healthcare. I was tar targeting finance or probably the experience which I was, which is MLOps event. And I used to go there and then talk to the people and tell tell about uh, if is there if there is an interesting problem they want trying to solve it's so like there are hundreds of finance people there are hundreds of healthcare people into a particular event and then you go and as an ai export or ml export and then pitch about the product and say that hey this problem i can solve it for you let let me know if you're interested so one of the mega thing which it can help you out there, there, there might be several other events, conferences, which can eventually help you out. You can just go to any even brightest one such platform. You can find such events very, very easily. That's not it. You should continuously cold email people with your 
offer personalized offer which you build with your right set of proactive so that any statement any hook which will catch their attention and then reply i will show you some of the emails and then this these guys i should reply to my emails so out of every 20 email i send i get replies on five emails and that's the best thing which i could ever done so it's all about how you can pinpoint and probably put up a something and then you target that only so that this hits that guy to reply to you. There might be several cold emailing strategies telling online. You can try that out, see what works for you and then eventually go ahead. So this is how I was able to go from $10 to $25,000. But this one feedback or probably one thing which I could potentially tell you guys is stop being transactional. So I was talking to a, a agency which makes a million dollar in an ARR. And the founder of this agency says me, he's my investor, by the way, also. He says that whenever you meet a person, it shouldn't be that you're trying to sell a service. You're trying to keep the conversation, trying to understand his problem, you're trying to see if you can do something with it. You're trying to contribute into the conversation. And for example, if somebody comes and tells, hey, I have this problem. And then you say, hey, I, I run this agency and I can potentially solve that. But it's not about you, it's a, you, that you're being transactional and it will look in this guy selling product to me. It should be the, the guy sells, I have a problem. You understand the problem that 45 minutes of your meeting should go in understanding the problem, talking to him very naturally. And then if they feel like they will ask you that, hey, will you be able to help into it? Or will you be able to connect me with a person who is who will be able to do it for me? And then you say, hey, I can definitely think about it. Right. So then you tell, okay, I run this thing. I can potentially see if, and then he knows that you talked about the problem in depth. You can solve this much more better than the people who will just come and then ask about what I can solve it for you. And it's not always about you go and meet a potential freelancing clients or businesses. It should be about that you're meeting genuine people. Because as I said, that he asked this question, will you be able to do it? Or can you potentially refer anyone who can do this? And that's what exactly happens. So if you meet someone, tell genuinely talk to them build a relationship he or she can probably refer you into the future that okay i know this person very well I, he can potentially do your work and then you guys connect so this is how the whole set of things and this was a golden advice by my investor come a uh, very great agency which is making a million dollar so that's it for this video i really hope you've taken some insights which i could potentially give i'll be catching up you in the next bye bye